Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Uh, this, this is a whole new experiment for me, uh, the Learning Center uh, virtually. So, and I've got a great presentation on, um, on Arbor Day. And it looks like we've got, let me see, it looks like we've got 14 participants. We're going to uh, take questions and answers afterwards. But because we had a late start, we're going to wait a few minutes to get, to get going. All right? Hey, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to... Um, to uh, the, the Virtual Learning Center at Chalet. I see we're getting more people coming on all the time. Welcome, welcome. I'm gonna move this over here. Oh, I can't do that. Okay. The numbers are ticking up. Welcome, welcome. This is this is my um, my my mask that I should be wearing all the time when we're here at Chalet. And, but because you can't hear me, I'm gonna take it off and have it just hanging here. I know it looks kind of weird, doesn't it? But um, this, this um, as, as, as everyone is signing on, I'm, I'm welcoming you all. Welcome to the Chalet's Virtual Learning Center. This is inside my new office. My new office just got redone. So, so next time we can open and have people visit, I'll give you a tour to see where I'm located. Um, you can type questions throughout the program and um, it, I'll see them. What I'd like to do is save at, until the end to answer all the, you know, all the questions that you might have. Okay, we've got 20 people here. Uh, it's just a little bit after 10. Because we changed the reservation, I'm gonna wait a few more minutes to get started. So don't you love this tree that's on the screen? What a beautiful antique, it's a live oak from down in uh, Louisiana. It's one of my favorite trees. I've actually seen this tree, so fun. Now you might see where you can type in questions and, and um, it will pop up on my screen and I'll be able to um, notice them and answer them, but I'll be able to get back to them at the end of the program as well. Okay, now we've got 22 people. Welcome, welcome to uh, the Chalet Virtual Learning Center. I know this isn't a weird earring. This is, you know, my face mask. Um, my husband corrected me when I said I was, I was color coded. He goes, no, 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 you're color coordinated, Jennifer, see with my shirt and the navy blue. But I'll keep it off so you can hear me better. Okay, these numbers are ticking up. We've got 23 people. I'm wondering if I can see you all. Isn't this fun? But when I have the PowerPoint up, I don't think I can see the faces like on some of the other ones. So um, the numbers keep ticking up. 25, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Chalet Virtual Learning Center. Um, I'm Jennifer Brennan and I'm sure, I'm sure um, but I love that you're, you're participating in this fun event. We are working like crazy here at Chalet, doing phone orders and doing online orders. You know, people do the online, online ordering. And um, in honor of today, Arbor Day, um, Chalet has done a special offering of 10 different trees. And I'm gonna be talking about those trees in this presentation, um, about their, you know, the wonderful the attributes that each of them has and which are my favorite. Um, I'm also gonna give a, a little bit of a history lesson on Arbor Day. So, ooh, we've got 27 people. Oh my gosh, this is exciting. We sure miss you all. And um, we are seeing a lot of people, I'm doing a lot of, um, uh, you'll love this. Um, I've had this iPhone for, it's my chalet iPhone uh, for several years, but I never knew how to <laughs> use it. And after the last uh, month, I have become a pro at using the iPhone for um, FaceTime. Oh, and it's upside down. <laughs> anyway, oh, look, there it is. There it is. Okay, it's muted though. So, um, oh, we've got 28. Welcome, everybody. Jennifer Brennan here. Thank you for joining uh, the, the Virtual Learning Center. I'm actually sitting at my desk and my office is in the room back behind the Learning Center. And uh, they did massive construction on it over the holidays, tore it all out, 
cleared the ceiling. So we've got these really neat vaulted ceilings in here. It got a paint job. Uh, we've got three people in this office now though. So it's really fun. Oh, it looks like I, I just got 30 people. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, we're, we're starting a little bit late because the invitation went out with a new login. So I love that you're all joining us. Um, this, is, this, this is a special presentation on the 10 trees uh, that are being offered at $50, $50 off. Uh, so they're all $79.99 for online sales. And um, you can either do curbside pickup or we can schedule it for a delivery. And during the, uh, the COVID period, we're doing free deliveries for any orders that are over $50. Now, because everybody's using that option, we're out about a week for, um, for deliveries. Um, but, and then curbside pickup, you can usually pick things up within two hours after you've done your purchase. If you do it online, it takes a little bit longer, but, um, but we're, we're, sure, we're sure having fun making this work. Um, I don't know if you all heard that the governor um, gave permission to uh, garden centers to, to open for outside. We're waiting to get the, the, the answer from our owner as to whether we're gonna do that or not. But it sure looks good outside. I was teasing our merchandising manager saying, John, this is like getting up you know, the old line, you know, all dressed up and no place to go. Oh, the, the nursery just looks phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So we've got 34 people and it's five minutes after. Um, I think let's just, let's go ahead and start um, I'm checking to see if anyone's figured out how to do any questions just yet, but, um, but let's, I'm going to move this thing over a little bit on my screen. There we go. Perfect. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead. Oh, there is a question already. Let me click on this one. Let me see if I can get that. Will you please take your mask off of your ear? <laughs> Yeah, does that make you feel better if I have my mask off my ear? Okay, all right, thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, all right, very good, very good. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let's get this over here. Uh, I'm gonna put this up over here. Oh, that's not gonna work. I'm just gonna take it down. All right. Thank you everybody for your patience. Uh, we're up to 36 people. So we're, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. And thank you, yes, I do look better without my mask hanging off my ear. So um, I, I explained a, a little few, a few minutes ago that this is one of the, uh, the classic uh, live oak trees that is down in Louisiana. I've actually, I've actually met this tree before. Okay, here we go. Now my PowerPoint's not working. Don't you love that? Here it goes. All right, now, the very first American Arbor Day was established by J. Sterling Morton in Nebraska City, Nebraska. That's where he lived. And, um, and it, it was, it, it, National Arbor Day has been celebrated every year on the last Friday of April. It's a civic holiday in Nebraska, and, and other states have done this as well. The customary observance, and today is Arbor Day, is to plant a tree and it was it was calculated and uh, I think it was actually recorded uh, that on the first Arbor Day in 1872 um, that an estimated 1 million trees were planted. Now you may recognize the name uh, Morton and J. Sterling Morton uh, is the father of uh, Joy Morton and Joy is the, the gentleman who uh, founded the Morton Arboretum right here in Lyle, Illinois. And that was in 1922. And it was originally 178 acres that was adjacent to his estate um, out there. And, but it's actually grown to 1,700 acres. It is, it is absolutely wonderful. And it's been, it's been it was actually decided to um, be a, a, an institution that would grow native trees and, 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 and then and, and test them to see how they would stand up to all of our different variable um, environmental conditions here. Uh, I love this story about Theodore Roosevelt. Um, um, in, in, in 1906, um, 
the conservationist um, Major um, Israel McCrate of Dubois, Pennsylvania, argued that um, it, he argued with um, President Leonard, uh, Theodore Roosevelt uh, that his speeches, his conservation speeches, were limited to business businessmen in the lumber industry. So he was encouraged to do a proclamation. So he did the Arbor Day proclamation to the school children of the United States about the importance of trees and that uh, that trees should be planted and that trees that forest, forestry should be included in uh, the, the land grant colleges, which is kind of what I ended up doing. So I, lo I love that. I love that history about, about Theodore Roosevelt. Now this is, this is Joy Sterling Morton. And he again is the founder of uh, the Morton Arboretum. He actually uh, founded the Morton Salt Company. He didn't found it, excuse me. He moved to Chicago and started working for the Morton Salt Company and worked his way up to become the owner of, of the company. So, you know, Morton Salt, you know, Morton Salt. But uh, I, I just always thank him every time I go out to the, to the Morton Arboretum. If you've ever been out there, um, this is the Thornhill Education Center. It is a beautiful building. It's over on the west end of the garden. And every time I drive over there, you know, you're driving up and down through wooded hills to get there. I always want to sing that song over the fields and through the woods to grandmother's house we go. Um, but I've, I've been involved with um, a regional symposium at the, um, this, this, the um, Thornhill Educational Center for the last seven years. I helped I helped uh, revive the, the Perennial Plant Association um, spring. Actually, it's it's always in February. Uh, it's the it's the, the the regional perennial symposium, and it's always held in this beautiful building. If you ever get a chance to, to do it, it's really worth it. Okay, so um, oh, I went backwards. Good job, Jen. Okay, so now we're back to Arbor Day again, and of course you know that Arbor is the Latin word for tree. And it, it was, it's technically a holiday uh, in which groups are encouraged to plant trees. So that's what we're doing today. We're encouraging you to buy one of these 10 trees that we were able to get at special value. So we're able to offer it to you, offer all of them, each of them to you for $50 off the regular price. So it would usually sell for $129.99 and it's on sale for 70, they're on sale for $79.99. And that would include free delivery because it's the purchase is over 50 or you can also do a curbside pickup um, you know if, if you want to if you would like to do that so here we are and here is the here's the web page so that you can go and and look at them and see the photos of each of them and actually do the purchase from you know from there so this will look familiar when you go to our, our website now oh, I keep doing the backward button excuse me Okay, here's the first one, river birches. Now, um, it, this is a, a native birch that's prized and valued because of its stunning bark. It's usually white uh, with brown and tan colors and they all uh, peel, they peel off, or it's called exfoliation. And, and, and it just gives you wonderful fall color even when the tree doesn't have any leaves on it. This, this plant can get to be about 35 feet tall and it's narrower than wide. So uh, yeah, narrower than tall. It's only 25 feet wide. It can stand full sun, part you know, part sun or part shade. Um, it does tolerate moist soil conditions. It can. It doesn't like our heavy clay so much, and it doesn't like our alkaline soil. So this is one that really benefits from using Hollytone, the fertilizer that acidifies you know the the, the soil. Uh, it can it can stand um, flood prone areas as long as the water uh, drains away. People always think, well, river birch, it could stand in water and be fine. Mm -mm. They live along the sides of rivers where the water drains away into the, into the river. So that's, that's why they're called river birch. They get a beautiful golden yellow fall color. One of my favorites, one of my all time favorites. Now the Kwanzaa flowering cherry, this is one of, I would say it's the hardiest of the double flowering cherries, um, you know, and, and is tolerant here in this area. It is a beautiful focal point, you know, near a patio or in the front yard. Uh, it, the emerging, you can see on the photo here, the emerging spring leaves have that beautiful bronze cast. They turn a gorgeous, gorgeous green in the summer, shiny, glossy green. And, and then in the fall, 
they, they have that, that an orangey bronze color. And you just, the, the, the fluffy pink flowers look like powder puffs, you know, to me. Um, and then um, they do have small cherries, not edible, but they're ornamental and um, that, that stand. It's a small tree. It goes 15 to 20 feet tall with a, a spread of 12 to 18. And you have to have full sunlight for this one. Um, usually we'll tolerate um, generally dry, um, not ever standing soil or standing water in the soil, you know, but uh, it's, it's best to keep these moist. It takes a lot of moisture. If we don't get consistent rain, be sure and, you know, put a sprinkler up underneath it to really let it, let it water. And um, because of all the flower buds, I encourage people to use the Dr. Earth Bud and Bloom fertilizer. It has that higher phosphorus, really helps them set the flower buds. Um, the best time to fertilize is after it's finished flowering and you want to start doing it within six weeks of when it, you know, when it has finished flowering because then it gives it the nutrient, the building blocks to keep making new, um, and to produce the new, new flower buds for next year. And again, watch the water later in the summer. That's when this plant is making those flower buds. And if, it, if we have a hot, dry summer, it really, um, it, it really impacts trees like this where they just won't make flower buds for the next year. So keep them well watered and keep them well fertilized. Okay. Now the Indian summer crab apple, lots of text on this one. Um, but uh, this is just a beautiful, it had, they have showy dark pink flowers uh, with this persistent red fruit. Uh, it's really disease resistant. It's, 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 it's very tolerant of apple scab and also fly in a fire blight. It's a good sized tree, goes 18 to 20 feet tall and with an equal spread. Uh, they have to have full sun. They have to have full sun. They can get by. They're not particular about our soils. They can tolerate our heavier clay soils, um, but they have to have full sun. You just won't have a happy crab apple if you don't have full sun. It gets beautiful fall color too. Um, it turns almost um, a, a, a burgundy, back to a burgundy red in the fall. I love these trees. Just absolutely gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, next one. Oh, Chinese dogwood. This is um, the Cornus Cusa chinensis. And it has these phenomenal flowers that are gonna be opening just probably in the next two weeks in our landscapes right now. Uh, they're very long lasting. They're on the tree for about, I would say a good five to six weeks. And, you know, creamy white, the four petaled, and you can see the fruit it's down in that lower corner. They look like large, dry kind of raspberries. And so, so that gives an ornamental aspect to this tree, you know, as well as, as the flowers. And then look at the phenomenal fall color. This is one of those trees that has four seasons interest. It's got the flowers, it has the fruit, it has fall color, and then the bark is a patchy, um, exfoliating gray, tan, and brown, and it is just incredible out in the landscape. I mean, a wonderful, you know, small tree or large shrub. This is one of those people, this, this plants that people always argue about, is it really a, a tree or a shrub? And you can do it either way. Again, 15 to 20 feet tall, 15 to 20 wide, sun to part sun. And um, generally, you know, it's very tolerant of our soils. Um, I like to keep these moist, you know, watch the rainfall and give it a good, you know, a good, uh, you know, a good, a good drinking of water if we don't get a, a good rain each week. Um, yeah, again, the, the Latin name on this is Cornus Cusa or Chinese dogwood. All right, next one. Oh, and this is what it looks like in full, in full leaf. Isn't that just beautiful? Just, just a spectacular um, specimen tree. Okay, Jane Magnolia. Oh, this is also considered a large shrub or a small tree. Uh, we sell the multi-stems, like the photo that's right here. And you can also find them uh, as a standard. A standard means it's a tree form. And um, the, the buds open first, the flowers open first. They have a reddish purple out, outside, and then they open up to that wonderful white. Just spectacular. And huge, huge, large, large, large flowers. Um, it, it's, you know, and what's nice about the Jane Magnolia is that it blooms later 
than a lot of the regular Soulangiana or the Saucer Magnolias. So it's not nearly as susceptible to that, um, you know, when we get a late frost and it damages all the, you know, browns out all the flowers. Um, it has dark green, lovely, lovely dark green foliage, um, you know, throughout the season with, with kind of a, a very elongated leaf with a point, a nice point on it. And then it has a beautiful coppery brown fall color. I think I have a picture of it. No, I don't. I don't. I'm going to go back. But um, this, is, this is, I think, one of my favorite trees. These, these early spring flower magnolias just help me get over winter blahs, you know, and, and, you know and, and it's really helping, too, with this COVID thing. So it, all these plants are just helping us get through this. Okay, next one. Oh, autumn glaze maple. This is a hybrid cross. And so this is a cross between a red maple and a silver maple. And what, what, what that does is that makes this a faster growing maple. So this is considered a, a, you know, there's a fast grower, which means once it gets established, and that usually takes you know, two to three years, depending on the size of, uh, of the trunk when it was planted, then it can grow up to 12 inches a year. That's what, that's what a fast grower is. Slow growers are six inches medium growers or moderate growers are eight inches and fast growers are 12 inches, 12 inches a year. But the fall color on this is just spectacular. And you can see all the, the, the shapes of these. They're, the leaves actually have more of a, a, a deeply cut lobe, which is more like silver maples than, you know, than the red maples. Um, but they have the, you know, the very sharp pointed ends. They also have very sharp buds when you're checking, you're checking bud stage. This becomes a nice, nice tree. It's about 50 feet tall and about 40 feet wide. And uh, full sun is ideal. Although being in the maple family, it can, it can tolerate part shade. And um, this is one that um, because of the heritage of it, it, it's one that can live in the floodplain. And so it can stand it in, in soils that occasionally have standing water, but you don't want standing water for a long, long period of time. But um, again, if we don't get good rainfall, make sure and give this one a, you know, a, a good soaking every year. Now, this next picture I love. Look at these. Oh, my gosh. I love the canopy shape of this. It's that, you know, just a classic pyramid shape and just beautiful for specimen trees in the yard or also street trees because they have those upward branches. It's great for a street tree. They're not ever, you know, hanging down and getting in the way of traffic and trucks. Um, and gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Okay, red oaks. I'm an oak fan. I love oaks. And this is also known as the northern red oak. Um, and it, it's just, just, it's beautiful and it just has an artistic shape um, it, because another wonderful pyramidal shaped canopy. Um, and a lot of the dark green foliage uh, emerges as a light rose color in the spring and it turns um, this incredible you know, red, red, red color in, in the fall. Um, you know, it, it's, it's actually, full sun is ideal for this. And it also, this is one that prefers moist soil. So watch your rainfall and keep it well water, watered. I think, I love, I love the fall color on it. Look at the bark. It gets this deeply furrowed bark when the, when the, when the trunk gets more mature. And, and here's that excellent pyramid shape. And you can see the upright branches incredible i love it and even in this photo you can see how glossy the leaves are you know and, and, and in the in the big picture not just the, the the standard picture of the um over off to the side okay oh i'm doing great on time here we go oh red bud i have to admit the red bud is my favorite my favorite my favorite tree in, in this area it is it is a native understory tree so that means it is exceptionally shade tolerant. And it, this is another one of those wonderful plants that has something for every season. It flowers early, it flowers early. They're just budding up right now, flowers early. And this, it, it, the buds are right on, on, on the bark, right on the bark, all the way on the branches. And even on the trunk, you'll see the flower buds. It is the most unique, wonderful tree because of that. And then as soon as the flowers are finished, these heart-shaped leaves come out, and perfect shapes, just perfect shaped heart. <clears throat> Beautiful um, kind of glossy leaf surfaces, and then it's got a gray bark, 
um, that it is, it is, it's great. I love these up against red brick houses because they have such a great color contrast with the bark and the, and, and the, and the, and, and the, and the brick. The other cool thing about these is the fall color is, is just canary yellow. I love this because it's one of those plants that when you drive around the North Shore here, you don't notice them that much during the growing season because they're in the understories they're underneath all the big oaks and the big elms and things like that. But once the fall comes around and they color up with that bright, bright yellow, oh my gosh, it's so fun to go, oh my gosh, I never knew that a redbud was right there. I have so much fun driving around looking at it. And they're not large, large trees. Um, they, they range up to maximum, you know, 20 feet with an equal spread, you know, equal spread. So they tend to be nice and, and horizontal branched, beautiful structure out in, you know, in, in the in area. They do like to be well watered. And um, so, you know, kind of keep an, again, keep an eye on the rainfall and very, very tolerant of our alkaline soil. So not, not fussy at all. I, I just, I saved this next picture to, because I wish I could hear you all going ooh and ah when you see this. Isn't this gorgeous? And it, it just covered with flowers and that wonderful horizontal branching structure. It, it's just, it, it's just, it's just such a special, special tree. I love, I love these trees. And then up against this, this, uh, this painted brick uh, building just makes it stand out. It, it's, isn't that just incredible? I love red buds, just fantastic. Okay, now this is the Cleveland Select Flowering Pear. It's also known as the Chanticleer, is the, that's the cultivar name. It's a narrow ornament, ornamental pear uh, that is really great for small, small gardens. Um, it, it tends to get 35 feet tall at maturity, and you know that can take five years, five to 10 years. And then it's, it's narrow, it's only about 15 feet wide, and it does require full, full sun to get all those gorgeous, gorgeous flowers and needs to be moist, needs to have moist soil. So you, you know, make sure that you keep it well watered and watching that rainfall. Um, it, the, 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 um, the leaves on here, so shiny and glossy, and then they turn just a wonderful, you know, purple and red, you know, in, in the fall. Um, it, 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 what it does is it tends to color up much, much later than other trees. And it hangs on to its leaves a, a lot longer than the other leaf, trees out in the in the, um, in the in the in the environment. It has the fruit is non-edible, very small, so it's not messy, and it tends to stay on the tree for most of the winter. And then you know, and then sometimes when it, it softens up, the birds will eat it. But it's a non-edible, very insignificant, considered a flowering tree rather than a fruit a fruit producer. Okay. Here we go. Oh, the tulip tree. The tulip tree is a native. It's a native of um, the Eastern United States. And uh, it has those really unusual shaped leaves. Um, no other plant has leaves that are shaped like that. So it was an easy, easy plant to identify when I was in plant identification. And um, it has these really unusual flowers that, that look like tulips because of the stamen and they open up like a like a like a tulip, so that's where the name comes, tulip tree. And uh, they have those greenish yellows, and then you can see they're accented with kind of an orange accent inside the you know inside the the, the flower. Um, the fall color, you can sort of see it in this picture. It turns just a luminous yellow, you know. And um, this is one that it's best to keep it mulched and keep it moist, and um, you know for the, the the best leaf appearance and. Um, this is one of them that gets a classic. If we don't get enough, if we don't get enough rain in the summertime, we get classic uh, damage of drought on that leaf, and it's just right along the center vein. So, but you're talking to the the plant disease diagnostician here. So I always love seeing these because they're they're so easy to diagnose. This one gets to be pretty big. It gets to be uh, 60 feet tall and 50 feet, you know, 50 feet wide, uh, and again, moist soil. Um, Beautiful, beautiful shade tree for um, in, in, for a large, a large, large, large property. Okay, so, oh, and this is the beautiful furrowed bark. And then I love showing you the, um, the, the, the canopy uh, of it. Yeah, I just love this. Okay, weeping willow. Now, this is called the Wisconsin weeping willow because it's hardy in, in up here in this area. 
and it has that graceful weeping, you know, um, in its structure. The branches are gold. They're, they're kind of a yellow gold color. And, um, and this is wonderful near a water feature. So near a pond, you know, or, but you have to be careful with this one. You know, you don't want to plant it too close to the house because the roots will creep in under the foundation and you don't want to, you know, you want to watch it if it's, you know, the, the roots seek out water. So they'll go in and can tend to clog a, a sewage system. So if you have a willow on your property, you have to make sure you do that maintenance on your, you know, on your, on your, on your, your, your plumbing. So, um, but this is gorgeous. It gets to be about 40 feet tall and a four equal spread, 40 feet wide. It needs to have full sun, you know, full sun and um, can tolerate any of the soil conditions we have. It, it can be moist, it can be soggy, it loves to be near water. So, so, and then the fall color on it is beautiful golden yellow, beautiful yellow, yellow, yellow. And, and, the, and then also when the leaves are first coming out in the spring, they're kind of a pale yellow green. It's, it's kind of the definition of spring green. I, I, I love these. What's beautiful about these is how they move in the wind. You know, it's, it's one of the next best things to having a water feature, you know, in your garden like a fountain. These are always moving and, and the sound is just absolutely beautiful. So it's, you know, the, the, the Wisconsin weeping willow. And that's the one that's hardier here in, in you know, in, in, in this area. Um, these are all the list again, showing the prices and the discounted prices. And, um, and I think just in summary, after, you know, from this presentation, all, we, all I can say is, I want you to plant trees. I want you to plant trees. Uh, I'm going to check to see how many uh, questions there are. Here's another question right now. Let me pull this up. Oh, that's the same one. And I took my mask off my ear. So I can say that was answered. And I can dismiss that. All right. Any other questions? Here's another one. <clears throat> Sure. Can I show the prices again? I'm gonna um, I'm gonna back this back up. Oh, it's gonna make me move this. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, it's gonna make me get this out. All right. It's not gonna let me go backwards. This is silly. Okay, I'll click on here. There it is. How's that? They're all usually $129.99 and uh, they're in five gallon containers. So it's, an, it's pretty easy to handle. They're not great big. And so they're $79.99. Okay, I've got some, oh, lots of questions. Here we go. All right. Okay, is the pear tree you mentioned susceptible to blight? Um, well, I'm not sure what you're talking about with blight. If you're talking about um, apple scab, they, it can get apple scab. Um, it can also get fire blight. That's what you're thinking of. So, so if we have a warm, wet spring, it's more susceptible to, 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 to fire blight. But you know, you can spray with um, a copper spray. And we have, it's called copper soap, or it's copper fungicide from Bonide. And it's, it's the active ingredient is called copper octanoate. And you spray it on and it prevents it, prevents it from, uh, from getting that disease. Okay, what soil amendments do you recommend when planting? Oh, that's an excellent question. Okay, for all of these, the, the best is the cotton burr compost. So you dig the hole, you dig the hole only as deep as, as, as the, the five gallon container. And then go twice as wide as, as that. Take that mix, uh, that, that, that soil you've taken out, and mix it with 20% of um, cotton burr compost. And that's gonna be your backfill. And then fill that back in, firm it down, and water it in. And a great, great question. And then the other thing that I like to recommend is uh, root and grow, which is the transplanting solution. It's a liquid 4103 fertilizer component. It's got that high phosphorus for root development, but it also has a rooting hormone in it, endobutyric acid or IBA, and that tells the plant, plant, I want you to make roots, and the plant actually does that. So, so it's wonderful, and again, two ounces in a gallon, and then you pour that right where the trunk goes into the ground, and then do that every two weeks for three times, you know, if you do that, and then that covers the first six weeks, 
and that's how long it usually takes for the roots to grow out from the root ball into the surrounding soil. Okay, do you offer planting services? Yes, we do. And the planting service is um, half the value of the tree. So this is a little tricky. It's $129.99 or $130 regularly. So the planting fee would be half of 130, which is, um, uh, that would be, oh, I, can, I can do math, $65. So, so it, it's not half of the sale price, okay? And um, we don't have cruise scheduling just yet, but we're getting there, we're getting there. Okay, well, shall I plant the trees or do we need to do it ourselves? Oh, that was an oh, thanks. Oh, thanks so much. Well, um, okay, if you want the, if you want the plant planted, you have to schedule a planting and then, or, or you, can, you can plant it yourself too. It's not, I mean, that's what Arbor Day is all about, isn't it? No, no, but if you want us to plant it, we'll schedule it for you, okay? Uh, okay, then what size are the specimens you're selling? Okay, they're in a five gallon, uh, they're in a five gallon can. And so they're about um, a half inch in, in diameter as far as the caliper of the trunk goes, or the diameter of the trunk. And they're about, they're about six feet tall. They're not real big. They're, they're cute little baby plants, you know, so, so, um, so that was a great one. Okay, What's, uh, which trees are native to our area? Well, I mentioned that through all of the lecture and, um, and you know, like the, 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 the red bud, um, the, the oaks, the, you know, the northern red oak is, is native. Um, uh, uh, the, the willow is not, the willow is not, um, and the, the birch is. Uh, I can go back, Debbie, I just see your first name. I can, um, you know what I can do, if anybody wants the PowerPoint, I can, um, if you email me at Jennifer B, uh, it's, it's Jennifer B at shallynursery.com, email me your email address and I'll send you um, a, a, a link to the Dropbox where you can look at, you can go back and study study the PowerPoint, okay? Okay, how tall would a five gallon river birch be and does it need a professional planting? I think I answered that, Lawrence, um, perfect, but um, I'll repeat it again. It's pretty easy, it, it, it's, it's pretty easy. You know, that a five gallon is, the five gallon container, I would say is 12 inches to maybe 15 inches in diameter and 12 inches deep. So that's not a big hole to dig and um, it's, pretty, it's pretty easy, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not a great big woman and I can lug them around. I can move them around. So, 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 you know, again, that's what Arbor Day is all about. Okay. Now there's, this is Sandy Campbell. How do you fertilize an ornam, ornamental bloomerang lilac tree? Okay. Uh, okay. Um, what I like to do is I love any flowering tree. I, I love to use the Dr. Earth bud and bloom fertilizer. It, it's a, it's an, um, let me see, it's a 9% phosphorus. I believe the recommend, I, I believe it's 594. Uh, don't, I need to, I need to have that, but I know it's 9% phosphorus. So it's great if you're just having a newly planted plant because it gives all that phosphorus for root development. But then there's also enough to really help those flower buds and uh, keep going. And the Dr. Earth actually lasts for um, 60 days. So I would give a dose to um, the, 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 it's blue meringue. It's blue meringue, not blue meringue. It's, it's blue meringue lilac. And, and uh, cause the blooms come back, get it? And um, I would do that this month. So this would be, let's count this the first of May and then do it again um, the first of, um, of, uh, uh, of July. And you'll have just phenomenal, you'll have phenomenal flowers. Okay, does the pear, Pear tree has smelly blooms like the Bradford. Ooh, that's a good question. Um, I think there is a fragrance. I, I, I think there is a fragrance. And, and I, I, I can tell that, uh, and is it Josie? I, I can tell that um, you don't like it when you call them smelly blossoms. <laughs> they, do have a, they do have a fragrance. Okay, how long is the sale, sale price in effect? Oh my gosh, I should be able to, I should be able to answer that. Um, I think, I'm, I'm hoping it's not just today. I need to radio somebody. Hold on, this is why you have radios. This is why you have radios. Okay, here's my radio. Retail, retail. This is Jennifer and I'm in um, a, a, a Zoom 
lecture, I can't answer a question. How long is the, um, the Arbor Day sale going on? Is it just a one day sale? Okay, they're gonna answer me back. Okay, hold on. Thank you, Jean. Don't you love having a, a radio? Be careful what you wish for. Thank you, everybody. It's Arbor Week, so you get you can, you can do this for the whole week. Cool. Oh, so it's to the end of the month, which is really good. Okay, that was a great. Okay, that was a great question. And oh, here's more. Okay, this is from Don. Can you give your email address again? Yes, here it is. Oh, I might be sorry, huh? No, no, no. Uh, it's Jennifer. I just thank you so much. I just got the answer that it's through April 30th. It's the Arbor Day sale. Okay, and here's my email address. Okay, it's our first name and our last initial. So Jennifer B. My, my name is Brennan, but so Jennifer B. J E N N I F E R at Chalet Nursery. C H A L E T N U R S C R Y dot com. Okay, this is great. All right, now um, can the rooting solution be used? On a year old oak sapling absolutely you can use it every year and what i like if we like the last five years we've had really wet soggy springs this year has been really nice this has been a great great year mother nature's being nice i'm touching wood so she doesn't backlash and make it wet all for the next month but um you can use that every spring and it really helps a plant make its roots and get them get them produced before the growing season. So anytime you can help a plant do that, I like to use it in the fall too. And if you've ever had a plant that has had any root damage, then use the root and grow and it repairs them just like that. Plants that really respond well to that are the Japanese yews. They hate to be in soggy, rainy conditions and they'll start yellowing. If you use the root and grow on them, oh my God, it's like, it's like an elixir. They love it, they absolutely love it. Great, great question. Okay, please give the name again. Oh, I just did that. That was Root Root and Grow, and it's from a company called Bonide, B-O-N-I-D-E. Okay, so I have both a dogwood and a red bud. Oh, I'm so glad. Should I use the earth fertilizer for these trees? When do I fertilize? Okay, for both the red bud and the dogwood, I'd get I'd get a dose out right now. And with the Dr. Earth Bud in Bloom, it is um, it is one cup for every ten square feet. So what you want to do is measure out how far the branches are extending out, draw lines perpendicular to the ground, and then draw a circle. And then I know you can use math for the area of a circle, but if you just want to make it easy and just kind of square it up, if the branches stick out um, six feet, so then the total diameter would be, would be 12 feet. And so 12 by 12 is 144 um, square feet. And divide that by 10 and you know then that's going to be like 14 cups or a little less and just sprinkle it all over the ground underneath the the, the tree and and you'll be amazed even on top of even on top of um turf or grass plants okay great 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 okay here we go uh, i think i think i got all of those questions this is great, and we're coming up. It's ten. Let me see. It says ten fifty one on that last question. Um, I guess I'll say thank you, everybody. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna close this screen off to see if there's anybody else up here. Uh, I got all the questions. We had thirty six people. Thank you so much for joining us, and um, I'll check my emails and send out that link if you want to study the. Um, the PowerPoint a little more. I got some really good photos, so it's it's really good. it's really fun. So, oh, there's one more question. Hold on, and uh, this is kind of fun. Oh wow, an anonymous attendee said this was awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you all. It's so nice to have you back here and uh, be addressing you. I miss seeing your faces, uh, but. Uh, Pretty soon we'll be, we'll be back, and I'm hoping that we're going to be able to open up our outside um, nursery in in the next couple of weeks, so people can come in and enjoy the fresh air and see the gorgeous plants and select your plants your own, you know, going forward. So um, thank you so much, everybody. Keep in touch and stay safe and sound, and and keep those face masks on. Okay, love y'all. Bye.
Cool.